welcome to Fully Charged. Today I am in Southern California. And the reason for that is because when you think of electrified classic cars, there's one name that I think of more than anybody else. And I've known about them for many years. They're called EV West. And if you like old Volkswagens, you like electrification. Woo! This is the guy that you probably want to talk to. Hey, Johnny. To. It's Michael. Good to see you, buddy. It's really good to All meet right, you, finally. For out. I know, right? We started really just trying to uh, save the car. Yeah. Right? Uh, so there was, we're not obviously the first to do this, but uh, I feel like we were kind of early with the car preservation thing. Yep. Uh, in other words, work on the car and the environment and the technology kind of comes afterwards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you obviously into Volkswagens and other old yeah, German stuff. Yeah, right. Anything we can convert and still keep it original, right? Yeah. Keep the, the heart and the soul of the vehicle. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's have a look around. Yeah, let's go inside. I'm going to just give this motorbike away to somebody. All right. It's really <laughs> nice. I'm sure you'll find somebody that's willing to it's, take it. <laughs> it's trick, right? It's very trick. Something like this is a really good example of uh, how far we can go because this is essentially a first generation electric dirt bike. It's kind of a, a good indicator of where everything's going in the market. Now I've seen that online. Yeah, yeah. So a this really is a, early Beetle, really early. It's a 53 uh, Baja Beetle. Yeah. Uh, we didn't Baja it, <laughs> it came to us this way. But we thought it was a, a great platform. Everybody loves the Baja Beetle. Yeah. And we did the twin motor system in this. So it's quite a bit more powerful. So they're stacked, yeah. Stacked side by side. We call it like a parallel configuration versus the inline. So we do use a synchronous drive belt to connect the two. Yeah. Uh, and then we're running through the stock transaxle modified to be a two speed. So it's still fun. You still got the clutch. You can shift and rotate it in the sand, and kind of kick it out. So it's absolute blast to drive. <laughs> There's nothing more SoCal than, than air-cooled vans. Right. Yeah, I think, uh, what, we need surf racks on it. You That's do, about yeah. It, right? <laughs> what got me into this is an old friend of mine called me up one day and said, hey, let's do some of this... Uh, uh, budget limited endurance racing that's becoming popular this about you know 10 years ago yeah uh we built an e30 you know just one of the best cars in the world the winningest car ever the right BMW, the e30, yeah, yeah yeah uh built one of those built an endurance car loved it ran a couple seasons won some races uh and just got hooked right um so everything's a progression the next car was an e36 yeah and instead of gas i decided hey let's try this brand new electric stuff we're hearing about you know and so you just thought you'd try might it. as well try it and um there really wasn't anything to model after you know most of the companies that we were looking at we wanted to go race pikes peak and you know you're dealing with companies like yokohama and you know, yeah. Red Bull, Monster Tejima, stuff like that. So <laughs> it seemed like it was so outside of our grasp and we built the car. Yep. It did remarkably well. Uh, we set a record for street legal electrics and, yeah. you know, uh, in not car? even mentioning in, in the M3. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, we came home from the mountain with this feeling that uh, for sure this is our future for one, but the electrification was kind of like a great equalizer. It's kind of like we could go in and compete with people that had far greater budgets, far better experience and all this stuff, yeah. and be competitive because the electrification gives us uh, advantages yeah. that we normally wouldn't have. So the performance that we needed to get at the mountain was outside of the ratings of the components we use. So we were in kind we of, pushing. Unknown, we were pushing it, yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. quite a dangerous place to push. Uh, yeah. Isn't yeah. it? <laughs> I'd rather break down than go off the cliff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, so. and we're underneath it. I've seen this numerous yeah, times. Well, this is actually my personal vehicle. This is my daily driver. I take my kid to school it every day. Is it? And yeah, it's my daily. Uh, uh, we electrified it about two and a half years ago. I've got 33,000 miles on it already. So it's doing uh, about 15,000 miles a year. So it's wow, it's getting nice. used. And you can see, I mean, you know, the cables. Uh, it's dusty. And all that. And of course, you know, nothing wrong with the electric drive system. It's performing flawlessly. We chewed up another transaxle gear. Uh, we're running about 300 uh, plus foot pounds in this one. Yeah. And we're still using the type one transaxle. So our next step, uh, we're right now uh, pretty well into developing uh, a complete bolt-in, no-cut, reversible Tesla kit for the bus. Yeah. Really? We're going to use the smaller Tesla motor, the 250 yeah. kilowatt motor. That's how to uh, cut for something this small and light. Yeah. 250 kilowatts, it'll be yeah. all right. Yeah. I mean, this right now runs at 160 kilowatt, and it's just crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's a Volkswagen. It's a 1965. I was so. going to say, and I'm looking underneath it with such jealousy because it's so <laughs> rust-free compared to what right. we have in the UK. Yeah. Yeah, I had one of these and it, 
it was from California. Where yeah, they, where they this all... is probably, I mean, even the rockers are completely rest free on it's this incredible. guy. Yeah. The preservation of yeah. your climate around yeah. here. Let's, so, well, that, you know, that's kind of a neat point because the bodies are lasting so much longer, we should certainly have a drive system to match. Yeah. And you put a brushless induction motor in there, it'll essentially go forever, right? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you have all these cars running around and an uh, engine block is only good for so many revs, right? Yeah. And we really like to lead with the car. Let the car be the star. Don't worry about trying to be environmentally friendly or renewable or any of that stuff. If you focus on building a really good electric car, actually everything else will fall in line after that. I know people like Jay Leno have come and visited you here yeah. and yeah. a number of other, you know, well-known names. Well, we have Ewan McGregor's 54 all over here. That's his, that's yeah, his car. very uh, progressive gentleman and he's doing, you know, and we're preserving everything. There's no cutting. In fact, uh, we call our kits reversible because you can pull it out of the car yeah. put the combustion motor back in and take it to a Concours style show and a judge isn't going to see anything that indicates it was converted to electric. So it's right? really sympathetic. Yeah. All reversal. factory bolt-in compatibility. He's yeah. been a VW guy forever. VW guy McGregor. forever. And that's, yeah. that's telling, right? You get yeah. these car guys that are really into cars and uh, they find this acceptable. Yeah. Wait, so you what know? is it? Um, what, it's, an, it's a heart tail light. Over heart tail light full and a semaphore. Yeah, so yeah. it's a pretty rare model. It's a pretty rare model. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. really fantastic. Yeah, and you know, uh, it's, it, it gives us pride, right? We yeah. love this stuff. There's nothing, uh, you know, what's better than this Beetle? This Beetle electrified. Yeah. Well, and he, I presume he lives in California most of the time. Yeah. So this, this yeah. car's gonna live yeah. around yeah. here. I think uh, shortly after he bought it, it broke down on him and he made some tabloid uh, pictures pushing it down the street. And I think he doesn't <laughs> want to repeat that. So, you know, uh, I look at that and I'm like, well, there's a true gentleman pushing his own car. Yeah, <laughs> no, people, so, don't, people are too posh to push these yeah, days. Yeah, I know, right? What's and the they deal? just leave it in the middle yeah, of the road. Just call it Uber and take yeah. off. Yeah. yeah. Let's go and have a look around here. Mark. Yeah, let's take a look. We've got some other cars. You've got loads of stuff here. Yeah. This well, is um, everything. a little scanning station. We do a lot of our own engineering, so we have a station here where we can scan oh. the bell housings and create uh, custom parts. I think this might even be from a Jaguar D, uh, an Opel GT. There you oh, go. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. So uh, somewhere out there, a uh, guy's doing an Opel GT. He sends us his bell housing, and we can make special one-off parts for it. So he has perfect fitment. So you, you, you sell bits for people to home convert if they want? Right. And equally, someone can book their car right. in like you in or yeah. anybody? The whole uh, goal of our company is to help people, and, and we don't discriminate. You can be a shade tree mechanic or uh, you know, a 25-year master tech. It doesn't matter. To us, you're the same because you just want the best equipment available to convert your car. Yeah. And that's agnostic for the customer. It doesn't matter, right? We're just like, yeah. we care about the car. And yeah. we want to make stuff, uh, like you'll see some of the kits over here for the Porsches and stuff, that just bolt right in. No modification. Yeah. And, and that's uh, what I came to know you guys for. Right. For doing, doing that the, bolt right, in, keep right. the transmission if you want. And so the interesting thing with that is, how do we make all these parts that fit the cars and how do we sell them online if we don't have the facilities to actually make the parts and test the cars and test fit them yeah. ourselves, test drive them and all that. So what that does, we can uh, you know, customize our firmware and dial in the motor settings and really get systems that we know and we trust. Yeah. And then it's a matter of replicating that for customers. And that's basically the purpose of the store is to take stuff that we've developed for you know, our own selfish reasons, really. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, because you've but got you take that cars. stuff and you develop it and perfect it and then it's very easy to kind of replicate that for because customers. Because that, that's, so that's your guinea pig for any right. type two right. split screen. And that way your or... customer's not just coming into it just cold. They've, they've kind of got a group of people behind them that have been doing it for yeah. years and understand that same system in a very similar, if not the exact same car. Yeah. 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 So here we go, uh, the, the Beatles posh brother. You know, this is the 
the well-loved. <laughs> what is it? A nine twelve? A nine eleven? This what? is a nine twelve. Most yeah. guys uh, will do the nine twelve because of the value of the nine eleven yeah. these days. Yeah. So this is part of our bolt-in kit. The transmission in this is the nine one five gearbox, and the front of our subframe tray actually bolts into that. And then we put factory 935 CV flanges that we had machined for us right into the Tesla motor. So by uh, just manufacturing a couple custom parts, you can take other parts that are essentially off the shelf and get them to bolt right in. That really fits quite neatly, that yeah, Tesla. Yeah, just, it really uh, looks like it was engineered that way. I mean, like it's it light and low, and, and so this car is direct drive. Mm hmm Yes, yes. The Tesla motor has a 973 reduction in it and it turns like a 16,000 RPM. So, you know, That's incredible, isn't with it? a decent tire on it, this is 100. You're not gonna need no. more than that, yeah, 16,000 yeah, RPM. No. My, my Enfield is seven and a half. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. You know, the biggest issue is just finding a tack that will go to 17,000 yeah, on the dash. Course, so yeah, we've been doing the motorcycle some, right, right yeah, yeah. yeah. This tray with the four bolts and the axle flanges, yeah. Uh, is only about a 15 to 20 minute installation. And uh, we're working, we're developing this kit to actually be turnkey. So all the technical stuff that you see here actually gets manufactured in our facility and then we can ship it out complete. Wow. Right, so it saves the end user a lot of like working with the high voltage lines and yeah. stuff like that. Cause this, I mean, this is integrated. This is the battery pack right here, right? I, I thought it was. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's fully integrated. Everything that you need to drive this car is contained in this tray, this other than some bolts. instrumentation and a gas pedal up And that's front. four bolts. Right, wow. right. And then we have, uh, this one's getting the optional, another 16 kilowatt hour pack up front, and it puts a little bit of weight over the front tires, which reduces understeer, so it's, it kind of benefits the handling as well. Yeah. Let's so, go Let's yeah. go into here, because I've just clocked the DeLorean. Yeah, you saw here. that. We walked past your, we walked past your never ending Yeah, Porsche the project. never ending uh, 912 project. We've all got never ending projects. Uh, you know, an e-bike project. There's, you know, a couple other projects hiding back there. More um, Beatles, more beautiful. More, more Beatles. So. I'm going to go and stroke the Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> Not the Tesla, the DeLorean. But, well, soon to be Tesla, it's close enough. So this came out of the manufacturing facility in uh, Humble, Texas. I know it's a little dusty right now because um, we've done the ferro arm scanning. So we did the computer measuring device over in the other bay. Mm -hmm. We came in here, we've built a model of the rear end of this car. And then using that model, you know, we do all our heavy lifting on the computer, right? So yeah. that's a uh, mouse. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but once we verify that we can do all that stuff, then we'll give the plans to an actual fabrication shop that builds, you know, race cars and off-road vehicles. And they'll yep. go ahead and- They'll uh, make a cradle for they'll it. They'll make a cradle it. for it. Yeah. Right. yeah. This is gonna be amazing. Yeah. It this really is. is. There's such be uh, Tesla beautiful powered. cars, and to, to to be lucky enough to get one that has never had a gas engine in it, has never been driven. It doesn't have a single road mile on this car. It's got zero miles on the odometer. So this is really uh, what's well, like a new old stock, never right? unfinished new, NOS DeLorean, right? Yeah, absolutely. seriously. It'll probably uh, my goodness be the only DeLorean that's driving around that literally doesn't have a single mile on it under combustion power. How so, bizarre. Uh, it and really brilliant. Is, uh, you know, they say back to the future, but this is probably from the future. So imagine it moving under combustion. No, you, no, you yeah, don't. You, you want that uh, very powerful, torquey whine of an you electric motor. You do make motor. that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, an electric motor under a heavy torque load makes a different sound, yeah. right? Uh, in the same way that a turbo sounds good, this, these sounds are really pleasing. Yeah. And, and a lot of guys that haven't driven a really high performance electric car. Uh, that's one of the first things they comment on. It it's is. like, it sounds so much better than I thought. I thought yeah. it would be quiet. It's well, like a jet engine spooling up or right. something. Yeah. yeah, nobody's gonna deny the power of a jet engine. No. Over here, this is our power wall. Uh, it's all solar powered. It's completely off grid, so we're not hooked to the grid at all. Uh, it's wow. uh, 33 kilowatt hours, so quite a bit of capacity. And then we've got about five kilowatt of solar on the roof. So uh, we can, you know, just, just charge cars. Basically, all You're of charging our customer this one cars. Yeah, actually, yeah. yes. That's my son's that's cool. uh, Volkswagen bus, of course. and uh, it, it, I don't think it's ever been charged on anything but solar. Right? Really? So, um, and you know, part of it is it's nice to get our energy from the sun. Yeah. But there's that other part that we're not paying for this. Yeah. Right. It's free. So I drive the cars for free. The kid plays with his toys for free. Uh, we've kind of removed ourselves from that, uh, you know, just constantly having to, yeah and, yeah, and pay for it. Instead, we're generating it 
all in-house and using it in our own vehicles. So, yeah, fascinating project. Uh, I, uh, I, I have to ask. Yeah, so... What, uh, what's going on? I don't know if your viewers are familiar with what a, a paramotor is, um, but it's a paragliding powered motor setup. There are 99% of the drive units out there are two-stroke motors or yeah. four-strokes. It's like exist. a rucksack with an engine on it, yes. isn't it? and they make uh, probably arguably one of the worst sounding noises. You yeah. know, some engine guys might argue with me, but when you're flying, you don't want the drone of a two-stroke motor strapped back. to your back. Yeah. And so we uh, wrote some software and made some, uh, you know, engineering uh, examples, basically, of a prototype unit. Th that noise is a diesel truck. It's yeah. obviously not this. <laughs> it's that. Uh, leave it to an electric car chute to yeah. be spoiled by yeah. a, a big... Damn you, diesel. Yeah, damn you. I so mean, how, how so wonderful is it going to be when that's electric? Absolutely. Right, when the electric... Especially, especially local delivery stop start stuff. Right, start stop stuff. The, so this so, is a, a a prototype for an right. electric para paramotor. Paramotor. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. You can't stop tinkering, can you? No. So even when you've no. got a good, you know, thriving business of classic car conversions, you, th I this mean, is another uh, hobby. Was it another hobby? It was. Yeah. Yeah, and I think. Um, Somewhere earlier, I said something about being uh, driven by selfish <laughs> needs. And, yeah. and it really is. I think at the end of the day, if you really, really enjoy something, chances are other people will too. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the neat things about electric is now you're dealing with a, a different um, source of power. So you can do some things with that, right? So uh, one of the problems with paramotoring is it's been very dangerous. People have had to pull start the motors on the ground and then put the running motor onto their back. And that's an extremely dangerous thing. Yeah. So we integrated some lockouts where, you know, we have throttle lockouts where it doesn't work by you can hit a button, lock it out, get all geared up and then unlock it and then, it's and then uh, run, run the, the, the motor. And go ahead and unlock it there. And then I can hit the gas and there you go. Just like Fantastic. That. We, can, we can blow the camera away. <laughs> Don't want to give it too much wind there. Very cool. And that's it. And, uh, you know, again, you have the wine, you have the engine noise. Really yeah, cool. but cool if you're sounds. up there enjoying life, I like say you don't have a two-stroke on your back. Yeah. Like a leaf blower yeah. noise, yeah. which is a horrible noise. So this is a bench yeah. with this a Tesla our, motor on. Yeah, right. So this is where we test all the motors before we ship them. Um, this one's on here. We flash new firmware into it, get it running, yeah. run through all the settings, and prepare it for shipping. And with a throttle. Right. So you just put it into drive, just put it neutral. Into drive, right. And so uh, yeah. it's it's literally that easy. Yeah. So once you once you've done that, like you say, if you 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 buy a lot of complete Teslas. Right. Right. And you, you just buy a break lot of complete Teslas. They, you know, um, they come to us in various states. I mean, they've been making the car since 2012. So you definitely get different versions of the inverter and of the software and stuff like that. And so we kind of sort through that and uh, you know make sure the motors are running. It's still yeah. it's still a little bit of a mystery because they have uh, trade secrets, you know, in their software, yeah. and we don't expect them to give them up. Has Elon ever contacted you about this uh, kind of stuff? Because no. I've noticed the, num the number well, plate on this one is great. Right. Have a look at the number yeah. plate. <laughs> this is getting. This is actually our development platform for the 250 kilowatt Tesla motor, the small it, baby motor. So, yeah. And uh, this is going to be great. Yeah. This it's, is lovely. It's fun having you know rusty old patinaed cars as your test bed. <laughs> I love this. This is great. Yeah. Thanks. So here's our uh, skateboards. Yeah, right. You know, uh, hey, it's green transportation. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So here's our facility where we do a lot of shipping and the inventory. Probably got about uh, 30 complete Tesla drive units in stock, and we have Crikey, the yeah. actual subframes. Uh, a lot of really, really good parts. I mean, Tesla used the best quality stuff. A lot of American-made parts, a lot of Japanese-made parts. Really good quality stuff. Yeah, yeah. And you don't want to throw this stuff away. And we actually know where we can repurpose it. So we find markets for this stuff, yeah. right? Uh, it's amazing seeing all these motors. All the motors, yeah. yeah. So you're, you're, without being like dark and weird, you're kind of hoping that more and more people crash brand new Teslas. <laughs> I don't want anybody to get hurt. No, say that. no. But yeah, I mean, no. uh, we have a lot of batteries. Most of everything in here that you see in a wood crate is essentially a battery. Oh, that's all the packs uh, up there. These are all packs. These are, you know, we do a lot with the Tesla battery. We do a lot with the LG Chem battery. 
that's the the fascinating thing is the the OEM makers they're they're driven to get the best energy density um, that's the key available and yeah. they're working hard for us yeah yeah they <laughs> so, are yeah yeah that's great. they'll do the R and D they'll do all the R and D so you don't have to and we'll take advantage and, and then pass those savings on to our customers right yeah so the bits that you need you keep and obviously you sell yep. them to you either put them into people's projects or you sell them to individuals yeah so if absolutely. I phoned you up and I said Mike I want a Model S motor that will fit in the infield that could fit in the infield <laughs> yeah you could sell you could just put this out you, on the you pallet. forget I'm not only just someone you're interviewing I'm a fan you are well, it's, it's nice <laughs> right? yeah so yeah this yeah is what the readers think what probably, do you guys think of a Tesla powered infield <laughs> yeah that would be good wouldn't it right yeah. it would be really good yeah. I'll have to measure it up before yeah. I go and so this is great because you can see uh, this is kind of rare. A lot of people don't get to see it out of the car. Yeah. You've got that M3 out there and a Porsche and a nice van. Could we go out for a spin? Yeah, why are we carrying on? I mean, it's sunny out there. Yeah, why are we in a gloomy it, warehouse? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I'm going to let you drive. I haven't seen the sound? sun in weeks. Can I drive? Absolutely. That would be amazing. My pleasure. Yeah, which one? Which uh, one? I'll let you decide. Well, I'd like to drive them all I, if I could. <laughs> but, uh, I noticed your eyes keep going well, over the, here. This is the one that I've seen the videos on the internet of, uh, and it's—I know let's, it's a bit of an animal. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> this thing's this thing's—it's a proper race car. It's a proper race car. You're absolutely right. I don't know how to get into it whilst maintaining my dignity. <laughs> I mean, that's quick for something with this kind of steering. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Can't see! God, that's good, right? 